Dark Master here, back again for another Lego Ninjago episode review. This time it is episode 82, Dread on Arrival. You really gotta love these puns. Anyway, the episode starts off with Harumi taking Lloyd captive and putting him in a cage, where it's revealed that she burned down the temple to reveal the temple of resurrection so like there's like a temple in a temple and they also revealed that they had captured Lloyd's mother of course it's kind of out of left field really but and it turns out she was the reason they were after you know baby Wu. apparently Misako had found him before they did of course you know the ninja interfered in that it then cuts back to the ninja, who have somehow miraculously befriended the crab monster and found Pixel, and they make their way to the sheriff of the police, who they tell about the Sons of Garmadon, which leads to the sheriff and the police going after the villains with not guns, but tasers. I, I don't, maybe they banned guns in this city. I don't know. Anyway, the sheriff and his police, you know, posse, managed to distract the lesser members of the Sons of Garmadon while the ninja sneak their way into the headquarters. The two guards, of course, get, distract, uh, get distracted watching the ceremony which allows the ninja to enter a, a little before this of course you know pixel and kai had some fun character interaction which was really interesting then it turns out like she uses the three the hair from the wife the child and the brother of garmadon which can i just say the hair looks looked terrible it looked like crystals rather than hair, but you know, this is Lego, and your Lego can't really do hair well, I guess. It's really, it would be really hard. Like, let's be honest, that's that's next to impossible to do. In fact, it probably is impossible within the style. And so, she calls upon Lord Garmadon, who, can I just say, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but man, does he sound sleepy? He's like, Haru! He's like he's like yawning, which I guess makes sense because he's being brought from the dead. But it, like that was a really good touch. I felt it's kind of weird. It's like how Harumi. It's, it's kind of out of left field, but it's one of those little details that I noticed. And there was another one too, but I'll get into that later. So the ninja fight with the significantly less awesome Mister E. They fight with Killow and you know Ultraviolet. Somehow managing managing to overpower them, even though last time they fought, they were pretty evenly matched. But I guess since they weren't using the Oni masks, it kind of makes sense. Anyway, Lloyd tries to get to Arumi, but the wind is apparently too strong around the portal, which makes like a which kind of weird. But so the ninja all push him using Spinjitsu so that he can reach Harumi and prevent the ceremony from taking place. And and let's just say Lloyd, man, he's been through it rough these last two episodes. Like he went from a cheery go lucky guy to a you know a jaded a I don't believe the best in anyone anymore kinda. But that gets more at the end. Anyway, the police arrest Harumi and a little detail I liked is how it took like five people to weigh down like like, just for the record, a regular minifigure is about the size in-universe as a regular person. So just imagine a guy so big that it takes, like, five police officers to hold him down. And then, that guy must be freaking huge. But, anyway, so, the ninja succeeded in, quote-unquote, stopping the ceremony. But then, at the end, it's like, da-da-da... The Garmadon is alive! He, 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 his hand bursts through the altar the same way 
the 2015 Skull Army did. Hmm. And, you know, these similarities to the Bionicle keep adding up. You know, the masks, and now a cult, and now, like, this... Like, there's just too many to really ignore. Anyway, I really liked this episode. It had its flaws. You know, the hair and Misako served as little more than, like, exposition, but... I felt it was really interesting. And of course, you know, we have the lava hands, which I didn't really mind, mainly because since I never gave it a hand prior, I think having a silly name like that kind of makes sense. I mean, what else would you call it? If I, if I saw someone whose hands were glowing that could melt, I'd call them lava hands. So it's not like some weird out of left field thing, like the hair or the, you know, ending twist. So yeah. And another part I like is where Harumi tries, like, one last time. I, I don't really know if Harumi's being sincere or not. I mean, she really sounds like it. Maybe I'm just a fool, a hopeless fool. But she genuinely did kind of sound, like, regretful. But Lloyd's like, save it for someone who cares. And, you know, at least he learns from his mistakes. Anyway, this has been The Dark Master. And I can't wait for episode 83. This is the first time I've ever been able to review two episodes in a row. And I really hope I could maybe do this in the future. Of course. Anyway, this has been the Dark Master. Remember to like, favorite, and subscribe for more LEGO reviews. Have a nice day.